Hello and welcome to the special project by Ukraine Crisis Media Center, Euro-Atlantic course, an analytical center, UCU, dedicated to the Russia-Ukraine war, Ukraine on fire. President Putin's announcement that he has put his country's nuclear forces on heightened alert and his military seizure of Europe's largest nuclear power plant has brought the world perilously close to a nuclear catastrophe. As the war in Ukraine continues destroying cities and causing the worst humanitarian crisis in Europe in a generation, government officials and experts discuss the implications of Putin's actions. Moreover, this is the first time there has been a full-scale war in a country with significant nuclear power infrastructure. And today we involved several speakers to talk about Russia's nuclear and chemical threat. Irina Stavchuk, Deputy Minister for Environmental Protection and Natural Resources of Ukraine, described the situation on nuclear threat created by Russian invaders, especially for our project. Hello, my name is Irina Stavchuk. I'm Deputy Minister for Environmental Protection and Natural Resources of Ukraine. And in this short video, I will explain the situation with nuclear threats due to the war in Ukraine. Ukraine is a country which heavily relies on nuclear uh, electricity in its system. We have 15 nuclear reactors, which are placed at four nuclear power plants, and the share of nuclear electricity in our system is 55%. Since February 24, Russia has been waging a brutal war of aggression against Ukraine. After facing fierce rebuff and suffering heavy losses in clashes with Ukrainian armed forces, invaders are increasingly targeting critical infrastructure um, and use terrorist tactics. Today, Russia is using heavy weapons, tanks, missiles and aircraft to attack civilian infrastructure, residential buildings, power plants and industrial facilities. These actions not only violate Geneva Conventions and international humanitarian law, but also create severe threats to environment and human health at local, regional and global levels. Um, so what are the main facts? The first case is Chernobyl facility. Already since February 24th, Russian armed forces have occupied the Chernobyl exclusion zone. On this territory, there are several objects with high risks of radioactive pollution in case of accident or a fire. Major object is confinement over the Chernobyl nuclear reactor. The Chernobyl nuclear reactor exploded in 1984, leading to huge um, radioactive pollution, which is listed as one of the major environmental catastrophes in human history. Also, at this place, there is a storage facility for more than 22,000 spent reactor fuel assemblies. On 25 February, increased levels of radiation by seven times were recorded due to the movement of heavy armored vehicles and other activities in contaminated areas. The personnel of Chernobyl nuclear power plant, who took shifts on 23rd February from the colleagues, are held hostage by armed invaders for more than two weeks without rest, proper nutrition and access to medical aid. As of today, nuclear facilities in Chernobyl exclusion zone remain without external power supply. Since 9th of March, invaders have damaged the power line, which was providing electricity to the nuclear facilities, including the new confinement and storages of spent nuclear fuel. Critical safety systems were powered by backup diesel generation generators, but it only has limited amount of fuel. Since March 8, the International Atomic Energy Agency has lost contact with monitoring systems at the facilities in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. The second case is Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. On March 4, Russian troops captured the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant the largest one in Europe. During the siege, they opened artillery fire at reactor unit one and administrative buildings, which were set on fire. Several firemen were killed while trying to stop the fire. Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is currently under control of Russian armed forces. On March 11, representatives of Russian state company Rosatom took over management of the plant 
but then said that it's not the case. As is reported by Energoatom, the Russian army has planted explosives at the dam of the Kakhovka water reservoir near the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. In simple terms, Russia has captured and mined with explosives the largest nuclear power plant in Europe. Since March 8, the International Atomic Agency has lost contact with monitoring systems at the facilities at the nuclear power plant. The third case is related to Kharkiv city, uh, where the Russian troops for two consecutive times attacked the nuclear research facility at Kharkiv Institute of Physics and Technology with reactor neutron source. On May 6, it was shelled by reactive artillery, destroying local electricity supply, and on March 10, it was hit by a missile strike leading to a fire. The full extent of risks associated with Russia's nuclear terrorism is very hard to grasp, as they are unprecedented. Actions outlined above are considered by Ukrainian government as nuclear terrorism, which demands special response in international level. The safety of Chernobyl working nuclear power plants, Kharkiv Research Nuclear Facility, and storage facility for spent nuclear fuel and radioactive waste in Ukraine are now under immediate and severe threat. In the case of a major accident with release of radioactive materials in the atmosphere, large land areas can be contaminated and become inhabitable. Atmospheric modeling performed by Ukrainian experts in cooperation with Norwegian Radiation and Nuclear Safety Authority showed that in this case, in less than an hour, radioactive clouds can spread over areas covering thousands of square kilometers. Mariana Bujarin, researcher from Harvard University, said that defense of nuclear power stations are not designed for constant shellings and hostilities. Let's listen to her expertise. Hello, I'm Mariana Bujarin, uh, a research associate at the Project uh, on Managing the Atom at Harvard Kennedy School Belfer Center. I would like to offer a few important points we all need to understand to be able to evaluate the very real risks threatening the safety and security at the nuclear power plants in Ukraine, those already occupied by the Russian troops and those that are still facing uh, the possibility of being attacked and occupied. The two most important things for preventing a large scale nuclear accident that risks a release of radioactivity into the environment is the integrity of the containment structure covering uh, a reactor and the proper functioning of a cooling system for the reactor core. Although the safety and security of nuclear power plants have been improved significantly since the accident at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in 1986, and then uh, the Fukushima Daiichi accident in 2011, none of the protocols and systems were designed uh, in view of a full scale and long term war in mind. So what we are witnessing here is truly unprecedented. And we can only um, guess and anticipate um, what some of the real risks uh, might be. Be it as it may, um, we need to keep in mind that each reactor today is protected by uh, a robust reinforced concrete containment chamber. Uh, and it is designed to withstand uh, some intensity of the outside impact, uh, even an, a, a, an explosion around it, as well as contain the release of radioactive materials into the atmosphere should uh, the reactor core inside melt uh, and, and cause an accident. Um, these containment chambers um, can likely withstand some artillery shelling or tank a fire, but they're not designed to withstand sustained air and missile uh, bombings and barrages. Yet the breach of the containment chamber itself alone will not lead to a disaster. The most crucial element of the safe operation of a nuclear power plant is the continued functioning of the cooling system for the reactor core and 
for spent fuel pools. The fuel rods inside the, the reactor core uh, contain enriched uranium, and the fission reaction that takes place in these fuel rods releases great amounts of heat. In order to control the temperature in the core, the reactor core needs to be constantly cooled, and that is done by supplying constantly circulating uh, water through the reactor, supplying cool water uh, to the reactor and whisking away uh, the warm water. Uh, the supply of water depends on the functioning of the pumps and the functioning of the pumps depends on the supply of electricity. If a power main power grid goes out and the plant is disconnected, then there are backup systems. Those are diesel powered generators that can produce electricity for a few days uh, and batteries that can last for uh, a few hours. In both the, if both the main electrical grid and the backup generators are damaged um, or uh, fuel is exhausted, uh, the diesel fuel is exhausted, and the water cannot be supplied to the reactor core, the temperature in the core will rise, the water will boil out and evaporate. And once the temperature continues, the temperature will continue rising. And once it reaches about 300 degrees Celsius, these fuel rods and reactor core will begin to melt. It can catch fire. And depending on the design of the fuel rods, um, it can cause uh, hydrogen explosions. Uh, and when there's an explosion, there's plumes and and, um, and uh, smoke uh, that's very highly radioactive and could be released into the atmosphere. Now, this risk exists not only for the cores of the functioning reactors, but also for the spent fuel pools, uh, especially if those fuel pools are tightly packed, as they often are, and contained just freshly extracted spent fuel that has been just taken out uh, from the reactor core. And while the reactor cores are protected by these, these uh, robust containment chambers, spent fuel pools are often not. So there are points of vulnerability uh, in the, uh, at the nuclear power plants. Um, so again, if, if such a spent fuel uh, pool and its cooling system are damaged and the water either evaporates or runs out because the, the, the vessel, the, the, the walls of the pool itself are breached. Uh, the same thing happens. Uh, water evaporates, temperature rises, uh, fuel melts, and there's uh, a risk of radioactive release. What does that mean for Chernobyl nuclear and, and Zaporizhia nuclear power plants that are currently occupied by the Russian military? Even though the very word Chernobyl uh, sounds ominous. Uh, the actual risk, uh, the nuclear risks there are lower than at the functioning nuclear power plants. The last reactor at Chernobyl was shut down in year 2000. So all spent fuel from the operation of the Chernobyl plant has been cooling for over 20 years and is less active than fresh reactor uh, fuel. There is nothing reassuring and nothing positive in the fact that today Chernobyl has been um, disconnected from the main power grid for, for several days now, and that the repairs um, from what we hear has, have been thus far unsuccessful. We know that the backup generators uh, had begun working and that there was enough fuel for 48 hours. Um, although some uh, additional fuel was alleg allegedly delivered to the plant um, within the last couple of days. This only means that for the spent fuel to begin melting at Chernobyl, it would take weeks, um, not hours or days. So this theoretically should give the personnel of the plant enough time to fix either the, the electricity or to be able to provide uh, water to the pools by other means. A more alarming situation is uh, on the operating nuclear power plants where the fuel in the reactor core and in spent fuel pools is much more active and therefore the disruption of the cooling system there is much more dangerous, will give a lot less time to react.
We must also remember that the personnel, both at Chernobyl and Zaporizhia power plants, the people who are trained to follow very rigorous safety and security protocols and have jobs of very high responsibility, they are working today in incredibly difficult physical conditions and under psychological duress. They are practically captives of the Russian military, people with guns, uh, who it is safe to assume know nothing about the safe and secure operation uh, of a nuclear facility and have already demonstrated their willingness to uh, shoot and damage facilities and systems at a functioning power plant. So the most dangerous scenario that could develop is when the confinement chamber of the reactor is breached and the cooling system is damaged um, and at the same time, the personnel is not able to repair it or um, do, do any sort of uh, preventative work for the worst to happen. So this could indeed lead to the meltdown of uh, nuclear fuel and to a catastrophic release of radioactivity into the atmosphere. We already had a preview of what this could look like some 36 years ago during the Chernobyl um, accident large plumes of radioactive material will rise into the atmosphere where they are picked up by the prevailing winds uh, that uh, no, no borders. They could blow toward Russia, they could blow toward Europe um, with precipitation. These, um, the, the water containing radioactive isotopes will fall out, uh, risking threatening the contamination of large swaths of land, making some of this land um, uh, uh, unable to be used for agriculture. Hundreds of thousand people might need to be resettled to other areas. Uh, the incidence of cancer, especially thyroid cancer in children and other diseases will go up. Uh, those and other environmental health and socio-psychological effects are impossible to predict and quantify, but they would be significant and they would last for decades. Finally, let's not forget that according to a unanimous decision of the International Atomic Energy Agency, of which the Soviet Union had been one of the founders and in which the Russian Federation has played a very prominent role, the, the agency, the IEA, uh, had unanimously decided to consider an attack or even a threat of military attack on a civilian nuclear facility as a violation of the UN Charter. It is something we have thus far feared from a terrorist group or a state maybe that uh, sponsors a terrorist group. Uh, but today we're facing a world in which a major nuclear power and a stakeholder in the international nuclear order has basically gone rogue. One more important analysis we had got from the prominent expert on nuclear security, Vitaly Demenuk. Dear colleagues, I would like to outline a few theses regarding uh, the current situation with the seizure of Ukrainian nuclear facilities by Russian troops. Russian troops captured the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, radioactive waste management facilities uh, located within, within the uh, Chernobyl exclusion zone, and uh, Europeans' uh, largest Zaporizhian nuclear power plant. Uh, of course, uh, this is uh, nuclear terrorism, and Russia is a nuclear terrorist country. Both the seizured nuclear facilities and personnel are hostages. In this situation, uh, you don't even uh, need to use uh, the term under control. In our industry, the concept of uh, being under regulatory control includes a whole range of um, measures uh, that ensure nuclear and radiation safety at operating nuclear facilities. And only Ukraine can uh, provide this. Under conditions of uh, terrorist uh, takeover, 
we do not receive data on the current parameters relating to the safety of uh, operation of facilities. And we cannot access the possibility of uh, developing uh, negative scenarios. But one thing can be stated. There is no control over the safety of operation due to the seizure of object by the armed forces of the aggressor country. This is itself in this, is the starting point of the development of possibility, possible uh, negative uh, scenarios. It should be noted that under conditions of uh, proper operation, a whole range of strictly regulated technological measures should be carried out. Whatever insurance may sound from the Russian side, the very fact of military aggression suggests that no insurance can be trusted. And uh, the use uh, by the aggressor uh, of uh, seizured enterprises and personnel can be of the most uh, cynical and uh, inhuman, inhuman forms. In addition, in additional, in addition, sorry. The personnel held uh, uh, at the captured enterprises who do not have the possibility of a normal shift and who work on the gunpoint of enemy weapon, weapons uh, are in the state of enormous psychological pressure and physical fatigue. This is in addition uh, to a possible violation of technological processes uh, through the fault of the aggressor is uh, in itself a very significant factor uh, that uh, gives uh, rise uh, to the possibility of developing uh, extremely risky scenarios. We cannot allow the aggressor to blackmail us and all of Europe. We need to return control over the facilities to Ukraine. Slava Ukraini! We also have a message from Petro Kotin, head of the Ukrainian National Nuclear Energy Generating Company Energoatom. He's calling on the global community to apply all their efforts to prevent a worldwide catastrophe on the territory of Ukraine. For the first time in the world history, the peaceful nuclear facility, the Parisian nuclear power plant, which is the largest one in Europe, the six power units, have been attacked by Russian tanks and heavy artillery. This is an insane and unprecedented act of nuclear terrorism. The shells hit Unit 1, where the nuclear reactor is located, destroyed the overpass with pipelines between Unit 1 and Unit 2. The terrain building was completely destroyed and the administrative building was significantly damaged. The transformer at Unit 6 was also damaged. After that, it was shut down for emergency repairs. The Russian occupiers seized the Parisian nuclear power plant and turned it into a military base. It has been under the full control of the occupiers for six days now. At the moment, there are 50 units of heavy equipment, about 400 Russian soldiers, and a lot of explosives and weapons on site. Also, the Ukrainian staff work as a plant in all six power units. The management is forced by occupiers to coordinate all technical issues. The staff is under heavy psychological pressure from the occupiers, but our people are resisting, refusing to cooperate with the Russian military and expressing hostility to the occupiers. The conduct of Russians violates nuclear and radiation safety. There are seven nuclear installations at the Parisian nuclear power plant site. All of them contain a lot of radioactive materials. First of all, it is nuclear fuel. An accident can happen at any moment. 
The consequences are unpredictable. We are calling on the global community to apply all their efforts to prevent a new worldwide catastrophe, as well as to help us to release the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and other civilian nuclear objects in Ukraine from the Russian invaders. We also managed to get comment from Yuzhno Ukrainsk, the city in Mykolaiv Oblast, where the another nuclear power station located. Thanks to armed forces of Ukraine, the situation there remains stable. As of 6 p.m. on March 13, the facilities of the South Ukrainian nuclear power station are operating normally. There are no comments on personnel and equipment. In the city of Yuzhno Ukrainsk, the city satellite of the nuclear power station, everything is calm. At present, there are no threats to the nuclear safety and physical security of the station. Experts and intelligence had already understood that if Russia accuses Ukraine and the world in something, it is going to do it by itself. Leonid Polyakov, Ukrainian military expert, specialist in defense policy of Ukraine, recorded his comment regarding scenario of possible nuclear, biological and chemical terrorization by Russian Federation. Let's listen to him. With regard to biological weapons blackmail, Russia claims about U.S. biological weapon labs and chemical weapon development in Ukraine. Russia has accused the U.S. and Ukraine of working with pathogens of dangerous infections in 30 laboratories across the country. Some of these labs received financial and other support from the U.S., the European Union, and the World Health Organization, as is the case in many other countries. Uh, the accusations voiced by uh, the Russian Communist Party leader Zyuganov, uh, Russian Foreign Minister Lavrov, the U.S. says that these accusations is total nonsense. These false claims may seem like a ploy to try to justify further premeditated, unprovoked attacks. However, given the doubtful results of such an attack on either the military or even civilian targets. It seems like Russians invented uh, this story about uh, biological weapons as a tool in information war against Ukraine and the USA. With regard to chemical uh, weapon alleged threat. The situation is a bit more dangerous. Accusing Ukraine and the West in plotting the chemical weapon attack, Russia could be planning a chemical weapon attack in Ukraine on its, on its own. It might be not a chemical shell or a chemical bomb, but an explosion in the facility containing aggressive chemical substances like chlorine or chemical fertilizers. In either case, we may be dealing with a rather limited area of chemical contamination. Given the mobile nature of the tactics used by Ukrainian troops, this is not of a great danger for them, especially if they are inside of a tank, fighting vehicle, or a special truck. These objects are equipped with special protective devices and coating from inside. In case of civilian population, the danger is certainly higher. Uh, however, it can be said that chemical processing industries are typically located outside of populated areas. Uh, meanwhile, Ukrainian civil defense units are on alert and they are working on protection measures for civilians. They have inventories of individual gas masks or special filters and other devices in underground hiding places. Now, with regard to... Uh, different kinds of nuclear threat. It can be in the form of nuclear contamination, as well as in the form of strike by either tactical nuclear weapon or strategic one. Uh, Kirill Budanov, head of the Chief Directorate of Intelligence of the Minister of Defense of Ukraine, uh, yesterday said that 
the Russian aggressor is working on two variants of nuclear blackmail and in any case intends to blame Ukraine. The first is the large-scale burning of radioactive forest near Chernobyl nuclear plant. Uh, so a radioactive cloud will arise immediately and go to the wind direction. The second scenario is the use of artillery against nuclear storage in Chernobyl. The result will be the same. I would add that there is a more dangerous third scenario. Uh, the cutting of electricity from uh, the storage facility in Chernobyl in few days can raise temperature of the storage and uh, nuclear material, which will emit the hydrogen with the danger of its explosion. And then the consequences might lead to uh, the same amount as in the previous Chernobyl disaster in 1986. The potential for a nuclear war seems so surreally devastating that it's tempting to ignore the possibility. But the longer the war drags on, the higher the chances that Russia would use the world's cruelest weapons. It's time to imagine the worst. In the description to this video you can find the information how personally you can help Ukraine against Russian aggression. If you find our job useful, please like and share this video. Everything is gonna be Ukraine.